Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, ever get the feeling we've been here before? Oh, we have. At the height of the worst pandemic in American history, that would be the Spanish flu of 1918, cities across America did something that the rest of us would find familiar today. They issued mandatory mask mandates and they punished anyone who didn't comply. Quote, the man or woman or child who will not wear a mask now is a dangerous slacker, reads a typical announcement from the Red Cross at the time. The city of San Francisco took these rules very seriously, so seriously that a city health agent in San Francisco shot a man who refused to wear a mask. He hit the two bystanders who happened to be standing behind the man. Now, that seemed a bit much to some people, but many other people thought it was fine. They went along with it. They were very afraid of the virus. They wanted to do their part to stop it, but most of all, they trusted their leaders. And if their leaders put a mandate in place, they assumed it was for a good reason and they wanted to help. And then a single picture changed everything. A photographer who happened to be attending a boxing match in San Francisco snapped a shot of several high-ranking city officials. That would include the mayor of San Francisco, a member of Congress, a senior health administrator, all sitting at the event, all completely unmasked. The photograph went national. Americans were shocked to discover that the people making and enforcing the rules had no intention of following those rules. Within a short period, mask mandates across the country ended. It turns out the public was willing to endure inconvenience, but not hypocrisy. This country is facing a similar moment again now. Once again, officials in California have been caught on camera exposing their own contempt for their own public health measures. This is footage shot at a Democratic fundraiser yesterday morning in Napa, Napa Valley, that's just north of San Francisco. Nancy Pelosi was there. She's got an estate right nearby. So were other Democratic officials and the party's biggest donors. They paid $30,000 per ticket to be there. Now, looking at the picture, the first thing you notice about the group, other than how strikingly homogenous and non-diverse it is, is that none of them are wearing masks. They're breathing all the fresh air they like, as if it's 2019 again. The only people there who are wearing masks are their servants, the faceless brown serfs scurrying back and forth to bring them things. There's nothing worse than having the help breathe on you. But that's not a problem for Nancy Pelosi, as you can see. I've asked for so long about young people and how we're reaching out to young people in the United Well, young people, we always ask them how do you want to be reached out to. It's repulsive, but revealing. It's pretty clear at this point that Nancy Pelosi, our chief COVID enforcer, doesn't believe a word she says about the virus. Now, Pelosi is 81 years old. That's deep in the risk range for coronavirus. She's standing at a crowded event in Napa, which, according to the Biden administration's color coded map of the country, is one of the riskiest places in America for coronavirus transmission. And yet Pelosi is not social distancing. She's not wearing a face shield. She doesn't even have a mask on. Why is that? Well, clearly she understands she's not in danger. And since there are no Republicans present, she has no reason to pretend otherwise. As a reminder, here's what Nancy Pelosi sounds like when she's back in Washington. Members and staff will be required to wear masks at all times. This is a mask from all over the country. I'm getting these masks. Real men wear masks, and these masks are essentially important. The chair views the failure to wear a mask as a serious breach of decorum. I have no advice for them, except when they come here, they have to wear a mask. But in any case, uh, I'm a big believer in wearing the mask and not sharing any, shall we say, air uh, unnecessarily. Yeah. So the real justification for mask mandates was right in the middle of that montage of clips. Quote, failure to wear a mask is a serious breach of decorum, Nancy Pelosi says. And she means it. And that's why in Napa, her little brown servants wear masks as they bring her wine. Decorum demands that they do. If there has ever been a clear window into their plans, into the society they are trying to build now, we're not aware of it. Our formerly middle-class nation now has a surf class, and they're the ones wearing the masks. 
They're the ones being forced to take drugs they don't want. They're the ones being told not to communicate with one another except through the digital channels the party controls. Social distance. We now have two groups of Americans, not a broad middle. We have the favored and the unfavored. We have the saved and the damned. We have the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. That is exactly how the architects of all of this see the country. Michael Hayden once ran the two most powerful spy agencies in America, the CIA and the NSA. Yesterday, a Twitter user asked him this question, quote, can we send the MAGA wearing unvaxxed to Afghanistan? Yes, replied Michael Hayden, good idea. That's how contemptuous they feel about you. Shut up and fetch another glass of Riesling, surf, and be sure not to breathe on me or you'll be deported. These are bad attitudes and they're accelerating. How far can they go? Well, for the answer, look to New Zealand, a famously placid outpost in the fast-shrinking Anglosphere. A single COVID case in New Zealand, not a death from COVID, but a case of COVID, has shut down the entire country. New Zealanders have now been told they are not allowed to speak to their neighbors. Stay local and do not congregate. Don't talk to your neighbors. Please keep to your bubbles. It comes down again to those very simple principles. We know from overseas uh, cases of the Delta variant that it can be spread by people simply walking past one another. So keep those movements outside to the bare minimum, wear a mask, and make sure you keep up that physical distancing. Do you hear that? By the way, the lady with the teeth is very popular with people like Michael Hayden. She's considered super impressive, visionary, really. Don't talk to your neighbors, stay in your bubble. That's New Zealand, but it's freer than Australia. In Australia, the government has implemented total lockdowns nationwide and then imposed martial law to enforce those lockdowns. What's the justification for this? Well, here are the numbers. From mid-July until last week, the entire nation of Australia, that's 25 million people, has averaged about one and a half COVID deaths per day out of 25 million people. And that has been enough to justify the end of Australia and totalitarianism. In one recent case, which really does say it all, authorities executed rescue dogs, shot the dogs to death to prevent Australian dog lovers from traveling to adopt the dogs. Leaving your home is no longer allowed. So they just killed the dogs. And the population put up with it. They were told they had to. Nightly news in Australia now looks like a science fiction film. One recent report described a 27-year-old fugitive. Was he a mass killer? No. He had dared to venture outside of his apartment complex. For doing that, for leaving the building, the media showed surveillance footage of the man entering an elevator and then, brace yourselves, sneezing without covering his face. There was no one else in the elevator at the time. For that, there is now a nationwide man hunt underway. An arrest warrant for this man has just been issued. We're not making this up. And that man is not the only person the Australian media and police are hunting for tonight. One Australian news outlet just reported, and we're quoting, a tip to Crime Stoppers has blown the lid on a church service attended by 60 adults and children. The gathering has been described as selfish and arrogant, end quote, for going to church. So what else in Australia is now considered, quote, selfish and arrogant? It's not just going to church or leaving your apartment or trying to adopt a dog. Watching the sunset is also selfish and arrogant. Watch. There's a whole bunch of people down the Rye Back Beach last night who thought the best thing to do is to go and watch the sunset. I'm sure it was a beautiful sunset. But that's not in the spirit or in, or, or in the letter of these rules. Scolded for watching the sunset. Executing rescue dogs. A nationwide manhunt for a guy who sneezed alone in an elevator. No one in Australia is laughing at this. No one can stand back far enough to see the lunacy on display. They're too far gone. This has been in the works for a long time, by the way. A situation like this does not happen overnight, long before COVID. In 2016, the government of Australia ended almost all legal protections for public protests. And at the time, people tolerated it. They trusted their government. They didn't think it was necessarily a big deal. So on Saturday this weekend, as protesters gathered in Melbourne, the government used its new authority to silence them.
If that were Iran, if that footage was shot in Tehran over the weekend, we'd all chug our tug our chins and say, of course, the mullahs, they're not like us. But it's not Iran. It's not North Korea. It's Australia. What we thought was a rules based society. What law did I break? You heard the protester ask as he's being beaten and handcuffed. That might have been a good question to ask a few years ago, but of course now it's too late. And you can see what happens when a nation tolerates authoritarianism, even for a moment. So you can either rebel immediately and say, we're not putting up with this. I'm sorry, we're free people in a free country. San Francisco did that in 1918 when the hypocrisy of their leadership became obvious. Or you can sit back and watch it accelerate. And in the end, you'll wind up like Australia and they'll shoot your dog. Matt Walsh is host of The Matt Walsh Show. He joins us tonight. Matt, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it. So much to get to, but it does feel like this is a pivot point. It's been a year and a half of this stuff. It's getting more intense. The crackdowns, harder to justify scientifically, more obvious, the hypocrisy of our leaders. How do we respond in the face of this? Well, I think, first of all, with, when it comes to Australia, there is a sort of poetic... There's something poetic about seeing the country come full circle and back around to being a prison colony again, which is basically what it is there. And I, yes, I think when, we, exactly. when we, we look at that, what we see, as you pointed out, that if, if the people will tolerate it, then, then the people in charge of the country will do it. So they'll go as far. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing new or, or terribly shocking about that. Our, the founders of our country realized that that was the case, which is why you have to put these protections in place. Because the people in charge of a country, any country, will, will, will uh, impose as much tyranny as they, as they can possibly get away with. And in, in Australia, they've, they've, the people have put up with quite a, quite a bit. And I think we have here, too. I'd also point out something else, that when it comes to Nancy Pelosi or any of these familiar scenes of our ruling class you're gallivanting around when they think no one's looking and they don't have masks on, I think we have to resist the urge to say this is hypocrisy. This is a double standard. It actually isn't. I think they're pretty, they're pretty straightforward about this. There, there is a, a, a single standard here, which is if you're an important person, um, then your life matters and you should be able to basically live as you want. But if you're an unimportant person, if you're, if you're, if you're a peon like most of us, then, um, then you just have to put the mask on and go, go with the flow. It's kind of like they look at us like you might look at a lizard in an aquarium and, and sort of say, well, I feel kind of bad that he's trapped in the aquarium. But then again, all of his needs are taken care of. And who cares if he enjoys life that much? He's just a lizard. I think that's how they look at us. They say, what, what does it matter? Just put the, put the freaking mask on. Put the mask on your kid for eight hours a day. What is it? What is it why, why should it matter to you? you know? uh, your life just isn't as important as ours. I think that's, that's, that's their attitude. And they're pretty straightforward about it. Man, I'm too old for this. I grew up in a country where people literally said regularly, I'm a taxpayer. In other words, I have rights. I'm a citizen. You have to treat me like an adult man. I, I can't remember the last time I heard anyone say I'm a taxpayer because nobody cares. Yeah, and that's, I think people, first of all, a lot of the people aren't taxpayers who are, uh, you know, that, that's, I think that's part of the, the plan here is to, you know, we know we, we're going to suspend rent. We're going to send out all these checks. We've got 10 million jobs available right. and nobody wants them. Um, so that's part of the problem. And also, I think at, at, a, at like a, a deeper level, you know, we have to go even deeper and see what's going on culturally, where, where so many people have been scared senseless that they'll go along with this. And I, I think on some on some level, it's yeah. like we have we have had to confront our mortality for the first time in this culture. And a lot of people don't know how to how to handle it. That is so true. What you just said. That is so true. Matt Walsh, appreciate you coming on tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. There's a lot of fakeness in this country, but is there a corporation in America faker than Patagonia? It's a 